What is up my peeps from the intertubes? It is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2 and this is your first video over DB2. Now DB2 is a database that was created by IBM. Historically it's been marketed largely towards enterprise customers, so think you know, companies that have more data than they would ever possibly know what to do with. <laughs> but lately they've been focusing a lot more on developers. So they've given new features and new additions to meet the needs of developers like me and you. To make sure we are all on the same page, let's answer the question, what is a database? The classic example of a database is a user using some application. And just be warned, I literally have the worst drawing skills of all time. <laughs> So here is some user using an application, and when he types information in there, it's going to get stored inside of a database. And this is kind of like the typical drawing for a database, except way better. <laughs> so he inputs info, and that's stored in a database. So the database is usually hidden from the user. And then, when this user comes back and accesses that application at a later time, we can actually get that information back from the database, display it on the application, which will be seen by the user. So this kind of setup here is good for transactional data. So if I said something like we're doing transactional processing, I want you to think input, output, updating, deleting. So this user inserts data, he gets that data back out. The other use for a database is analytics. Analytics looks at all of the data or parts of the data rather than just one insert or one select. So the analytics are used to make business decisions. Running analytics will give us averages, you know, trends, all of that good stuff, and we can use that to shape the direction of where we're taking our company. If customers like one thing but don't like something else, well, we can match our company and our content with what they like. So these are the two primary uses for databases, and fortunately, DB2 is suitable for both of these. We are going to start with transactional processing, but DB2 is awesome when it comes to analytics. Generally though, if you're new to databases, you will want to start with transactional. So that's learning how to work with data. How do we insert data into a database? How do we get the data back out? How do we update it and how do we delete it? DB2 is well known as a relational database. And what that means is it works with structured data. The other kind of data out there is unstructured data. Just like DB2 works well with transactional and analytical processing, DB2 does support both structured and unstructured data. And if you're new to databases, that's probably not gonna make any sense at all. So the easiest way to illustrate this is with a very simple example. When we are working with a relational database, we represent our data in tables. So this is a table and it's going to have a name, for example, users. And then we're going to have columns. These columns define the structure of our data. Every single user in here is going to have the structure made by this table. So a user ID, first name, and last name. This is structured data. Unstructured data does not follow table rules. We are going to start with treating DB2 as a relational database, so we are going to learn about creating tables and the columns, the rows, and how to connect tables and all that stuff. But as you get more advanced, you can work with unstructured data inside of DB2. It's generally well known today that if you're going to have any successful application or business, you're going to need a database. That being said, I do just wanna take a couple seconds to focus on the basics and really think, why do we need a database? And I have two good reasons. The first one is security. So the security capabilities with the database are tremendous. A general rule in computer science is that you don't trust anyone ever for anything. <laughs> so with a database, you can be very specific about who gets to see what. The other thing is scalability. This refers to the capability of expanding your data layer of your application or business. So as your company grows, DB2 has many additions that allow you to scale up to even an enterprise edition. So we talked about a couple things for general databases, security and scalability, but now let's talk a little bit about DB2 and why you would want to use that. The very first reason why I like DB2 is that there's a free version, and as you all know, I'm a total tightwad. <laughs> the other reason is something called Blue Acceleration. This deals with the analytics side of DB2. I mentioned a little bit ago that DB2 has some awesome things when it comes to analytics. Well, this is specifically what I was referring about. This is an in-memory processor. So essentially, we bring our data into RAM, and then we can run crazy fast analytics on our data. 
There's a plethora of other reasons why I think DB2 is a good database. So if you are starting a project and you're trying to decide what database to go with, go with DB2. On top of that, this series is going to give you the foundation needed to build a DB2 database. If you guys have any questions, concerns, or comments, just leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. On top of that, I created blog posts for these videos, so I will put the link to that in the description. Finally, if you actually want to give DB2 a try, I'll put the link to get that in the description as well. Be sure to subscribe because there's going to be a lot of great content coming out. We'll be doing some concept stuff up here and then some coding down on the, the computer, so <laughs> we get, you know, the concepts and the practical. We get, you know, the comp super excited. Hopefully you guys are as well. And as always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Peace!